Hey everybody, welcome back. This is another edition of the Marketing Roundtable REU. And yes, that does stand for Real Estate Uncensored. Today, uh, I am rolling with my homie, rolling with the homies, uh, Mr. Gene Volpe, who's flexing on the other side of the camera right now. Hey. Guys, we got some incredible stuff. We're going to talk, talk about the three reasons and plus more of why people suck at marketing. But before that, here's our intro. All right. So, Gene, we're going to come in hot today. We're going to be talking about why people suck at marketing. And this is no hit on anybody right now. We're just saying what goes wrong in your marketing and how can you correct it like that so you guys get back on track ASAP. But before I talk my face off, Mr. Gene Volpe, the legend, the myth, the man, the evil ball ninja, how are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. I would like to change some things. If I may. Can and what would that be? I'm going to request that from here on out, you call me the worldwide executive. Of, oh, um, oh, well, okay. Then there's that. But so what else do you want? That's really it. I just, I was um, talking to my brother today. My brother has this um, system where he can do background checks on people. And I was like, do one on me. Let's see what it says. And he came up with some funny stuff. And there's a company that I, an insurance company that I worked at back when I was in my, late teens, early twenties. And it had me listed of this, you know, it's a multi-million dollar company. It had me listed as president and, and CEO of this insurance company, which I never was right. Really? Not, not even close. And it said title worldwide executive. And I said, well, that's it. I'm going to have to have shirts made. So yeah. So so, WWE of that's exactly uh, what I said. I was talking to Brian. <laughs> That is exactly what I said. I was like, I'm the W or the WWX. I'm not sure. Yes, whatever you're going to call it. But yes, so you're WWE, WWX of real estate marketing. Let's jump into this real quick. By the way, your brother's amazing. And why'd you kill your video, fuckhead? I didn't. My, the phone, I'm, I'm, using, uh, I'm using my phone, actually. And the phone rang and I silenced it and I turned the camera off. Oh, my God. Well, I have 69%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a real number on my computer right now of how much power I have. So uh, many jokes. So many jokes. Oh, by the way, I met uh, one of my good friends, uh, Sophie, up at the dog park this morning, and her dog likes to 69 with the neighbor's dog. Jesus. Are you and I'm like, you really just go there? Yeah, yeah. We went there. We went doggy style. Okay. Uncomfortable um, conversations with Greg McDaniel. God, I hope Veronica got this one because she hit me up with that whole phrase of uncomfortable conversations with Greg McDaniel. What? Now she has number three. And what, three? How about 3,000? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> true that. True that. True that. All Jeez. right. So let's, let's jump knee deep into this. Let's talk about why people suck at marketing. Gene, you wrote back, uh, wrote back to me a couple of diff different ideas. Um, let's start at the top. What was your number one? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know. So I gave you three. We rattled through three of them, right? And I don't know which one would stand as like in if I put them in order. Um, what about the like platform knowledge? I mean, just knowing who to talk knowledge. to. All right, that's good. I, mean, I was going to just say to you, let's say, what's up, Mike Petri, by the way? Uh, Mike, what up, homie? Good seeing you guys. Um, yeah, I was going to say to you, why don't you just pick one and we'll riff, right? And I don't necessarily think that these are in any particular order. I'll let you decide for yourself which one is is the most important or probably is most like you, right? So in this one, knowledge of the platform. Um, actually, Greg, there's going to be a common theme here towards the end of this. Oh, I do like common themes. Okay. Yeah, and it's, I'll tell you, I'm going to, I foreshadowed last, our last uh, Wednesday marketing roundtable or whatever, our Friday, I forget which one it was. I forecasted how the show was going to end. And so I'm going to show. Hold on, Gene, oh, hold, hold. I got, I got to tell you something. Mark, do you know who's watching us right now? I just saw that. 
Marquee Lemons is watching us right now. Guys, if you guys don't know who Marquee is, she's been on our show a couple, a couple of times. She's amazing. Now, uh, listen, ha- here's what I here's what I propose. Uh, what? If she's up for it, to Ooh, get her, tell her if, if you're watching and you're up for it and you got 25 minutes free, Marquee, go to your go to your Facebook page. Greg's gonna send you a link and I want you to jump on here and argue with me. Oh my god, get her on Let's right go. now. Let's go. Uh, I'm right? in like a kid on a cupcake. If she's down, I'm down. Marky, I'm coming at you, girl. Okay, anyways, Gene, finish yep. your thought, and I'm going to highlight you so I can do sketchy shit over here and get her online. <laughs> we know you're doing sketchy stuff. You don't have to highlight me. So here's what I always <laughs> say, right? I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the problem, and then I'm going to give you the solution. And the problem is when I talk to people in the space and in the field and I go, You need to be on insert platform here. Let's talk about Facebook business page, right? You need to be on Facebook business page. And this one, listen, if you don't know Facebook business page by now, you just, it's your fault, right? Like that's the the oldest one. What is a Facebook business page? Yeah. It's the OG of right now. It's the OG of your marketing hub, right? So you need to at least be somewhat fluid in that. Number one, number two, I'm just going to use that as an example. Let's pretend you don't know what it is. Here's the solution. Get out of the, get, just start first, just start, make a post. And if, and if you don't know what it is, there's a pretty good chance you don't have anybody watching you right now, which is the best time to make your mistakes. So go out and post this. I mean, listen, I, I feel terrible. This is a seven year ago conversation. If I still have to talk to you about Facebook business page and not knowing is it yet, my friend? you got other things issue. You got other issues, right? Right. Um, but what I would say is in any space, that you want to learn. All you got to do is Google Facebook business 101, Twitter 101, Instagram 101. There are 90 bazillion trillion majillion videos, one and two and seven and eight minute videos on everything you need to know about that platform. So Twitter is a great example for me. If you Google my name, there's, I was just talking about this the other day with somebody. And this is real estate related, right? Google right. has 10 spots on their most most searches. They'll give you 10 spots on the first page of Google. Yes? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Prime, this is what we like to call prime real estate, right? So it's twofold here, right? Because we're talking to the real estate people. And in the marketing space, the first 10 slots on Google are prime real estate. If you Google my name, you're going to see that what Google thinks are the top 10 most important sites that I'm on. And I can tell you, LinkedIn's always there. YouTube's always there. Facebook business is always there. Instagram is always there. Uh, Google business is always there. Th- this is Twitter is always there. My webpage is always there. This is what Google is saying is important to your search credibility. And so therefore you must be on those spaces, right? There okay. are 4.9 billion users on Facebook. Facebook goes like this. Well, it must be important then, right? So we'll put it in our top spot. If we know Gene Volpe's there. So Twitter is one of those things. People still laugh at me when I use Twitter. Twitter shows up in that top 10 all the time if you use it. So people are scared off by Twitter a lot of times because of the complexity of it. It's actually hilarious to me. It's the easiest platform to work on and people outthink themselves on it. Do a search on Business Twitter 101 and they have some of the best um I love that. I love what you just said. They have some of the best things that you can follow to get an idea how Twitter works. And then what I say all the time, Greg, just start, jump on there, make your first tweet, make your 20th tweet, try to upload a photo. Maybe it's cut off crooked. Maybe your video doesn't upload all the way. Like make your mistakes while nobody's watching, get out there and do it. Search for how to on any platform you're interested in. TikTok is the hot one and you'll get plenty of information on it. All right, so Marky is, is is laying in. She can't she can't come join us unfortunately right now, um, or she won't. I don't know which one mm. it is, Gene. I'm going to go with that. She can't because okay. we love her. I'd like um, to think so too, Greg. She is saying the tools are not allowing me to be great on my mobile device. Break that down for me a oh, little. Oh, she bit. has an iPhone. That's a su- super simple. She has an iPhone. Okay. Um, sorry, Gene. Uh, <clears throat> uh, your break. Oh, oh shit, guys, we lost Gene. Oh, must have been the iPhone he was using. Wait, hold on. Yeah, there he is. He's back. Oh, thank baby Jesus. I torture my wife all the time. She's still going like, I can't send it. I go, what do you got, an iPhone there? <laughs> I got an iPhone. Right, it listen, this makes fine. sense to me. I'm the one. I am the adult in the room that knows how to handle things, and everybody else has the iPhone. That's you oh, know. Okay, so we're moving forward on this one. I'm Fan- just being honest. 
fantastically horrible. Um, Listen, I want to tell you something. Can I tell you something? No, please don't. Okay. I ahead. always I say this. There's two things. Why do I have a beard? Because I'm neither a woman nor a child, right? And the other one is, think about that for a second. <laughs> That's why I have a beard because I'm a grown ass man. And why do I not have an iPhone? Because I'm not a gamer or a TikToker, right? That's why. I'm I actually TikToker. do real shit with it. I am. I, I love it. But let's talk about that real quick. So how are people screwing up and Gene's laughing his ass off when he can't see them? Um, so when it comes to TikTok and everything else, why would having to use an, uh, an Android be better than, uh, uh, you know, an Apple phone or it's, an iPhone? It isn't. It isn't. It's probably, there are certain things about the Apple that actually outdoel the Google. I just, I'm a Google guy through and through from a phone perspective. I'm actually on a Mac right now. I'm talking to you from a Mac that's connected to my Android phone. So we're in disregard everything he just told us about what he doesn't like about no, the Mac. iPhone. That's the iPhone. It's not Apple or the Macs in general. It's the iPhone. So when it comes to marketing, I'm really curious about this. You, you threw out a number of 4.9 billion people who are Facebook users right now. How do you how do you maximize that? How do you uh, how do you not screw that up? Because we've talked about you know picking a platform platform knowledge, right? I think what was your first one? Categorizing. I believe if, I, if I, my scribbles make any sense. Categorizing? No, like well, my first thing was uh, not knowing the plat, not knowing that having the knowledge to navigate around the platform. And what I was saying was go okay. find, go find the tutorials on how to navigate the platform. Okay. So where do you find the tutorials? So you, you gave us some ideas in regards to going to YouTube That's it. and typing in like Facebook, Twitter, IG, Instagram, whatever, you know, hashtag or slash 101 or lessons 101 or whatever you want to put in there so you know correct me on the exact verbiage that you've used has been successful well truthfully I, i'll be honest with you I, I would specify it based off of exactly what you want to try to do right like so for so example jokes. what's that i have so many jokes you can <laughs> <laughs> so for example if you were trying to replace a toilet you would put in there replacing how do I replace a toilet and find the videos that show you step-by-step step how to do it, right? So if you're like, how do I create an ad on Facebook business or how do I boost a post on Facebook? I would be super specific because that's how these videos are created um, with uh, with the, 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 the data and the description and those keywords so that people that know what they're doing will actually create videos based off of these little training activities. And when you search it, that's what you'll receive. And you go down the rabbit hole for 15 minutes. And by the end of it, you're that's probably a, Nick Sackis is rolling over right now in his office. But, um, and actually we should mention those guys. Hopefully they're safe down there, right? Yeah. Yo, we have Nick Sackis. We have Jake Wolf. Uh, we have Aaron Wittenstein. We have a lot of our good compadres who are writing out this incredibly horrible cat five cat four uh hurricane that's going to be ripping through their their neighborhood so guys and gals please keep them in your thoughts and prayers uh we truly uh want to make sure they're going to be safe and uh yeah right now i hate to be an asshole but i have uh bright blue skies with uh no wind oh. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> total check yeah total that was it. yeah that was it. that was um Different. I know, uncalled for. Uncalled. Yeah. yeah. Bad Greg. Okay. Um, yeah. So back to that thing I was going to say, you, you, you go down the rabbit hole for 15 minutes. I was saying Nick Sackis is rolling his head down there because you can't learn Facebook ads in 15 minutes, right? But no. there's a lot of things that you can learn when you're dealing with entry level into these spaces. You can figure these things out in a lot of cases in 10, 15 minutes. But the question that you had was, when to make your mistakes. Do True. it now. Listen, I'm I'm a seasoned vet and a seasoned pro, and there's plenty of times I go back and I go, ah, damn it, I spelled that wrong again. That's embarrassing. And you go back and edit the post or delete it or whatever it ends up being. So you're always going to make mistakes. There's human element to it. Right? Well, we are. well, you make fun of me all the time because I misspell shit on yeah. titles. I miss say things all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Veronica Jones has uh, you know awkward conversations with Greg McDaniel because I always bring up word shit. I mean, but that's that's the definition of who I am. Yes, I'm going to fuck this up. Yes, I'm not going to be perfect. Yes, I'm 100% authentic to who I am. When's the last time marketing has ever taken that on and said, you know what? Be authentically you. Be real. Be honest. Don't be, you know, someone who you think you should be. But I mean, be the buffoon that we all are. None of us are perfect. 
boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, look, Gene Volpe is a very handsome, bald man with a very good looking goatee, beautiful family, great business, but he fucks shit up all the time, just like I do, just like you do and everybody else. So how do you take that, Gene? And how do you make it into something that's personable, relatable, and humorous all the exact same time while staying professional? Well, and getting business from it. I think you're a good example of that, right? Oh, I, and, and here's why. No, no, it's good. It's all good. Like you just said, you're, you can't spell. When I see something I from you, like right. And when I see something from you, I'll jump on you because I want to correct you. But in my heart, I'm like, this, that's Greg. Like, I, I know that's you. And I don't, that's one of the things where if I see something, you spell something wrong. I'm not like, this asshole, right? I'm like, that's Greg. He spelled that's what he does. I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. It doesn't we move on past that because we're friends and I know you, your character, all that stuff, right? I typically don't want to, I'm in a space where I'm comfortable enough where I don't want to work with people who are seriously calling me out on things like that. Right? right? Like if you're like, dude, there, there, and there, you spelled that wrong. Like that drives me crazy, but I will never judge you based off that. Like that people make mistakes. I get it. So for me, it's really about being human, right? Like what mm -hmm. I find over time is if I have to re if I have to recreate your persona to infuse that into your marketing space, it's going to fail every time because you're never going to want to do something that isn't comfortable in your in your world, right? Like if I said if you said to me, bro, I in order to recreate this persona that you got going and to make to get more clients the way that you want to, you got to dress up in a three thousand dollar suit every day with wingtips on. I'm out. I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. Uh -huh. Maybe if I did it the first day, where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. I know that my fat ass would be uncomfortable. Like, I just hate being in a suit. I don't want to go to weddings in a suit. Like, no. I, I, I want to set the new standard at funerals. Like, that's just not how I roll. You're not going to catch me like that. Like, I just did a presentation in California. We talked last week. Yeah. And the guy running the thing was like, you need to wear a collared shirt on stage. And I was like, I don't even own a collared shirt. <laughs> like, right, right. I got to go buy one now. So I had to go out and figure it out. And actually, I ended up not. I put a sport jacket over a podcast shirt. So I had a V-neck t-shirt on underneath the, the sport coat. So that's, that's just me, dude. Like, and even that was uncomfortable. Right. Um, so, and I even said on stage, I'm like, he's got me out here wearing a sport coat. Like, that's not what I Jordan's on, on stage with my, you know, a pair of dark jeans. Like that's what, that's what I do. If you ask me to dress like a certain way, I probably would pass that up because I just know it's not consistent with who I am. It's not comfortable in my space. And it's, it's not authentic of the, the character that I am, right? That actually comes down to a really good point about marketing, Gene. And you you didn't even try to touch on it, but you did. Dude, I I, I, I had to go to a funeral last weekend for a good friend of mine who passed away unexpectedly. And I, I showed up in full tilt. I'm talking like the, the scarf in the pocket, the, the full suit, the necktie, uh, the, 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 the vest, the whole thing. And I'm like, dude, I got to show respect, right? Everybody else was in shorts, flip-flops, baseball hats. I'm like, fuck, I feel like a fish out of water. But the exact same time, I stayed true to who I was and what I was trying to represent for the individual or the person I was going to be either speaking for or talking to. And so I think being a fish out of water could be a good thing as long as you learn how to do it. Like you on stage, you're like, this shit is just not me. And you... And not to say that you did this, but if you threw the coat off and you're like, this is me, who are you? That's marketing because you're going to attract the, the tribe that's going to be close to you. Uh, before we went on air, uh, I was showing you videos of my dog who I put fake ears on because it's I find it hilarious. And you're like, oh, my God, did he get ear surgery? I'm like, no, no, no. He just, you know, I just put fake ears on and I pulled them off and. He walked around just fine. He's now sleeping right behind me, right over here on the couch, wearing his fake ears because he identifies with them. He's having fun with them. Um, and he doesn't give a shit what the other dogs think. So <laughs> I knew you were going to laugh on that one. Did he tell you that? <laughs> well, because he's napping. Yes. That's, cool. um, That's actually really good. But when it comes down to kind of making mistakes and, and kind of to pigeonhole yourself into something that you're not gene what would be a couple of things that you would say don't do or something something that you've learned from doing that you would never go back to do ever again i have a couple of stories myself but i want to hear from you first 
because all of us try to emulate an individual or a, a, a category of business or something that we're like, oh, this person, this guy, this gal, they are killing it. And I want to be just like them. How do you defeat that argument? Hmm. I don't know. That's a tough one. You got me caught off guard a little bit. I don't know the answer. I mean, there are like I, I've I've always been a Gary V devotee, right? We talked about this before. Yep. I, I look in my space, I'm not a licensed real estate agent. So I look and I'm I'm marketing, right? And and you know this. If I didn't have to do anything in life to make money, I would teach people on stage all day, every day, all, all across the country. Like that's what I enjoy doing. I, I enjoy the yeah. show. I enjoy the spotlight. I enjoy making people laugh. And I enjoy dropping knowledge bombs on people where I get off the stage and they go, dude, that was amazing, right? That was so good. So for me, I'm in my world, when I look at Gary V eight years ago and I was starting to build my agency, I was like, what does this guy have that I want? And I was like, dude, they're flying him to Helsinki for these one hour speeches and he's making $110,000 for an hour. And I'm like that, that's what I like. That's what I want. I want to be in so much demand that people are calling me going, look, we're going to give you 50 grand and we will put you up in a hotel and you can get in and get out and be back with your family in four hours. Right? Like, and they yeah. give you a jet and a jet. Yeah. All those things. I want all of them. Now, admittedly, you know, I don't have a, an 18 person staff. He probably has more than that. Now the I think like 25 might, at this point, is it 25? Yeah, so I don't have that, and I'm not moving at his pace. And but that's actually okay for me. I'm not, I'm not chasing his hundred million dollar fortune for the most part. But what I'll tell you is, like, I've had people say to me in the past, without knowing that affiliation I have with Gary V, or they say, you know who you remind me of? Your energy reminds you of Gary V. And I'm like, that's awesome. I love that. Like, that's really really cool. But I, it's my twist on it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't look like him. I don't talk like him. I happen to be as energetic. But you think so? Uh, you you definitely talk like him, hundred percent. Okay, all right, okay. I mean, whatever that case is, but I'm not trying to be him, right? Uh, sure. You're still going to always get my spin. You're going to get my raw nature on it. You're going to get my, you, you know, when I come out, I come out and say something. You're going to go, did he just say that out loud? Like my wife is famous for that. You can't say that here. I'm like, no, nah, I, I can say it anywhere I want, right? Like you're going to get transparency. You're going to get the raw truth in a lot of cases. Um, I won't tell you a lie, so be careful what you ask me. It's one of my favorite lines from a song. Right. No. Like, how do I look in these jeans? Eh, I wouldn't out. Right. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't wear those in public, but I yeah. mean, yeah, you look great. You look great, but it's amazing. So my thing is, there's like, how do you combat it? I don't, listen, you take certain elements of people that you admire. You implement them however is comfortable for you in your space, but you wrap your own brand around it. Like you can still be you. I can still be me and pull things in. Uh, you know, I, I, a lot of my services that I run out of GVI media come directly from what I saw him building at VaynerMedia. Like I'm watching that and I'm like, and I bet you if he heard this, he wouldn't say, stop doing that asshole. He'd be like, bro, that's amazing. Like, that's so cool that you took what I did and made it your own. I think that's how it is. Well, that, that that's the essence of marketing. And for the boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, that are listening to this and watching this, um, Gene and I are our own people, right? And you're going to be your own person. Go out there. Don't be us. Please do not be us. Go be you. Go go be incredibly authentic to who you are. Um, I mean, Gene is wearing a bedazzled sweatshirt right now. It is bedazzled, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he owns it. I love that fact. That's cool. I'm wearing a baseball hat backwards. I'm wearing a, t a baseball, uh, baseball hat. With, and then my T-shirt which you guys can't see. I don't know if you can't see right now, but it says, um, check out my balls. I do it for the, the holiday shirt. It's got Christmas balls. Yeah. There's something seriously wrong with you. No kidding. Oh, good. There's way more than one. Check uh, out my balls. It's hilarious. And by the way, my girlfriend bought me the shirt, which is amazing. Even and it's nowhere near Christmas. I mean, I get, you gotta love it. It's not. And she bought me another shirt that says, I do it all for the hose. And that's a picture of, of Santa Claus in the in the middle. And I do it all for the hose. Ho, 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 ho. And wow. she thought it was hilarious. I bought her a, a science you know, t-shirt. And that is who I am. That's why you guys watch this show and listen to the podcast and everything else. Because what's going to come out of my mouth next? Nobody fucking knows. Gene okay. does not know. Nope. Matt, if he ever fucking showed up for a podcast ever fucking again, he might, uh, might never know. But I mean, like Jake... 
and Nick and everybody else who's a part of this, we're all who we are. So when it comes to marketing, don't be a part of the norm. Be different. Have fun. Wear a bedazzled sweatshirt. Wear a shirt that says, I do it for the balls. You know, it just be who you are. And if you want to wear a three-piece suit or a beautiful, incredible power suit as a woman, wear that. Rock on. You just had a Freudian you know, slip, by the way. What I do? You said you do it for the balls. It's, your shirt says, check, I, check out my balls. You just told me you do it for the balls. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a Freudian slip. Congratulations. Thank you. You're only becoming I, yourself. I, now I'm going to be blushing because thank you very much. Really I'm just appreciate saying what that you one. said. That's all. I was on a fucking roll and he just blew it. And there, there goes another Freudian slip. Um, <laughs> anywho, let's get back on track. I know we're on a timeline for today. Uh, Gene, give us one more good takeaway on what you should not do when it comes to marketing so you can be more visible and more relatable. Not care what anybody else thinks. So this is what related to. This is related to video. It's amazing to me how still people go, you know, like I'll go into somebody's office and they'll go, wait a minute. I don't like the way my hair looks. And I, I, actually, I'll tell you a funny story. You want to laugh? Yeah. I had somebody say to me, I don't really like the way we look in these pictures. And, I, and as the photographer, I went, I giggled and I was like, that's funny because it's just me and a lens in between you and what you don't like. Like, don't get tripped up on the fact that you don't like what it is. People, like, if you look at me close, I got a crooked jaw, right? Like, it's just the do way it really? works. I no, do. Don't. Yeah, I swear to God, I do. You, you can't see it a lot of times straight on, but a lot of times from a side angle, and I see it mostly in still photos, my jaw's a little crooked. I lost a tooth when I was a kid, one of my eye teeth, and my mouth shifted slightly. I see it. Nobody ever goes, dude, that dude's got a crooked jaw, right? Like, so I'm not going to put videos and photos out because I think I, I don't like my crooked jaw. I, I, it is what it is. This is how I'm made. When people see what I look like on video and photos, what I look like in person for the most part. So if you hate the way your hair looks, don't go to any meetings because that's where your hair looks. <laughs> like, just but, get you, but you don't have hair, though. Not me personally, but I mean, oh, I, okay. I, well, a lot of women will say that. My hair's not in the right space today. I'll pull it back. Tie that shit back. You know what I mean? Like you, you do that on a regular basis. You out, you seeing people at the supermarket? What are you just ducking away from people because you don't like the way your hair looks at the supermarket? Just turn the camera on the video, man. Just, just do it. Throw a couple things out there. I promise you that you will get better at it, right? Like just take that first step. Remember we said in the beginning of the show, just start. Go out and throw a video out. See how it feels. Get comfortable with the the mathematics behind hitting start on your phone and when it ends up on Facebook. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that you don't know yet that make it uncomfortable. Do it four times. Repetition will make it more comfortable. And then you worry about the way your hair looks. Like, just push it, man. Push it. You know what Bryce, uh, Bryce says is FISI, right? We have Brian, my partner. Oh, yeah. Link to Community Connect. FISI. F it, send it. Stop critiquing yourself and looking paralysis by overanalysis. Perfection is the enemy of progress. You're going to keep hearing all these things, right? Just just do it, man. Just do it. Start but the it's conversation. Cool, though. It's totally true. Yesterday, I was having lunch, um, actually by myself. I took myself to lunch, and it was fantastic. I had a ham double hamburger with cheese mm -hmm. with pastrami on top of it. Mm. It was it was $11 in San Sounds Francisco. Sounds like a heart attack on a bun. Oh, my God. It totally was. With fries, by the way. Fantastic. It's the only way to do it. Uh, I spilled mustard all over myself. <laughs> and then I took a photo. I sent it to a couple of friends. And I'm just like, eh, look at this dumbass, right? That was marketing because I sent it to actual prospective clients. I'm like, ah, I'm out here hunting for homes for you guys right now. Look what happened when I was trying, when I was rushing to go see your house. And it was mustard stains. And people were just like, that's hilarious. Don't worry about it. You shout, do this, blah, blah, blah. All those different cleaning treatments. The point of the story is this. It, that was marketing for me. And it worked because I was being real and authentic. And just, I was there. So, um, Gene, give us a takeaway. I know we are running up on a quick clock shutdown for this podcast right now. Uh, number one thing you should and number one thing you should not do for branding and marketing. So, number one, should go. They'll, they'll tie together. Greg, how do you make a video go viral? How do you make a post go viral? Naked drummer. What? The naked drummer. 
the naked drone. What the fuck? You've the... never seen that movie where oh, the the God. guy who's he was the old uncle. He was the drummer uh, for for a band. He didn't know they were doing webcasting, and it was that was just audio. And he was naked because it was too hot. He was a naked drummer, and he became a sensation because everyone's like, "Oh my God, you're the naked drummer!" And he's like, what, yeah. what, "What's going on? I don't get it." All right, so you just answered the question for me. That's that's not where I was going, but. <laughs> play, play musical instruments naked. Put it on the web. There you go. That's what you should do. Okay. Next one. What shouldn't you do? If I'm being realistic, you should never put videos on the uh, on the internet while you're drumming or playing. A, I just can't imagine what that looks like. It can't be the most attractive thing on the planet. Well, so, you kind of look. You kind of looked like Matt drumming naked. Oh, well, the, the women out there would love that. Yeah, from the head up, yes, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I will say this all, all joking aside. Um, number one thing we do not condone nudity in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there who get abused, and we are not for that on this show whatsoever. It was a joke, and so ho hopefully, everybody takes it as a joke on that one. Um, but in all honesty, one thing they should do right now go get uncomfortable with one of the social media sites. Get uncomfortable. So pick one that you're not usually. All right, let's go back because um, who just asked? Uh, Dean, I think. Dean asked uh, how relevant is LinkedIn these days. It's as relevant as the audience um, that you're trying to attract th thinks it is. So if your mm. client base is not on LinkedIn, it's irrelevant, right? It just depends on where you're at. Like I'm um, doing work with this tech company. LinkedIn is super, super. It's probably the only relevant space right now when you're dealing with C-suites at companies that are looking for tech solutions. They're not probably not on Instagram looking around for that stuff. They probably are still on Instagram. It's important to be there, but they're doing that more leisurely than they are from a business perspective. And therefore in that space, LinkedIn is super relevant, right? Um, but that's determined by your audience and what, and where they live, where do the eyeballs live? So first thing I would say to you is figure out, let's do this, figure out uh, who your audience is and where you think their, their eyeballs are for most of the day. And then jump out of your space and learn something new about that platform and go after it. I love there it. it. There it is. Learning is knowledge. I mean, no pun intended, but it really is. And I mean, I, Gene, you and I both, I mean, we were laughing about this before and we said it earlier on the show, if you guys just tuned in, um, Gene gave a great idea about going to YouTube and typing in like um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then type 101, you know, rules or opportunities or whatever verbiage you want to put in there. Gene, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I mean, starting going and just being a student of your business and your industry and uh, never apologize. You're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong a lot of the time, but you know what? You're going to be right a lot more. So just never stop. If you stop, you die. End of story. I like All it. Right. That's a good way to drop off. All right. We're going to drop off here. Gene, I need you to do your... Your only job besides being amazing on this show, what's your color on the bow for the show today? I want to say one more thing real quick, if I can, before we close. Please don't. Don't? Okay, I'm kidding. Go. Okay. I am going to be in and around Hollywood, Florida on October 11th, 12th, and 13th. Um, we're there for a summit, but I will be in the RV and rolling around that area in a slingshot. Um, if you don't know what that is, look it up. And, and he's not talking about the pedophile rolling around. We're talking about like a professional man rolling around looking to talk to folks to bring value. Is that correct? What the f What are you? I know. I, I had to go there. I it don't popped, even it, know. It like, popped in uh, my brain. I know. Okay. Anyways, oh so, we're still back to being. You're a huh? psycho. Um, well, I'm going to be in Hollywood, Florida, doing none of the things that Greg is thinking about. We're going to be down there <laughs> making relationships with people and gambling at the casino. Out. Um. And if you're in that area and you guys um, are sick and tired of the hurricane that's rolling through and want to have a drink or meet for lunch or hit me up, I'll be down there with the captain himself. Captain and I will be there. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Hit me up if you're going to be anywhere near that area. I'm thinking Fort Lauderdale, Del Rey, Del Rey, Boca Raton, Hollywood, Florida. If any of those spots are where you're at, let me know. We're probably going to have a happy hour at one point. Like hit your boy up and see if we can connect. All right, dates again really quickly. So everybody uh, put on the calendar. We'll be landing in, in that space around the night of the 11th of October. We'll be there 12th and 13th and then splitting out Friday morning, probably sometime fairly early. 
Okay, and that is October 11th through 13th of 2022, correct? Yes, yeah, like two weeks away, yep. <clears throat> All right, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, get out there, see the RV, go hang out with these crazy fools. They are a blast, super knowledgeable, and you guys are going to get a, a great time kicking it with them. Um, Gene, you still haven't done the color on the bow for the show, please. Let's go real estate uncensored red. All right, are you red? All right, I will do that. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm going to jump out of here. Gene, stay put with me for a couple of minutes after the show. Um, this is a real estate uncensored, uncensored red bow on the show. Thank you for hanging with us. Thanks for putting up with me and my bad humor. I find myself you know, hilarious. Gene does not find me hilarious half the time. Matt doesn't because he's never here. Uh, and then, of course, Nick and, uh, and Jake are weathering a hurricane. So, Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I love you. Until next time, peace out, ninjas. We gone.